So for more than half of the previous generation, I was basically stuck um, with a large backlog in playing games long after they released, at times up to almost a year after they were being released. And I'm finally at a point where I've I've almost caught up to actually the current games that are being released up today. I mean, right now I have a pull up for uh, some of the launch games right now on the PS5 and the Series X, but you know, I only have around four or so more games to play until I'm starting with the 2021 games. And so far this year, because a lot of stuff has been delayed and a lot of stuff is not coming out till later, there's only two games, you know, to play this year so far, at least the ones that I'm interested in, and that's Hitman 3 and the Medium. And, you know, we have more games releasing, but that's not until late next month. So I am predicting around May of 2021 for when I'm finally going to be done with my backlog and I'm going to be able to be caught up with basically most of what everyone is playing on release. But it got me thinking, you know, I, I've been so used to playing video games months after release, and it just got me thinking like, you know, I have been lucky enough to have experienced these games at a point when all the issues have been fixed, the patches have been uh, delivered, and basically the games are more or less done. Some of these games, when they launched, were in such a poor state that, you know, uh, at times maybe they were slightly unplayable. There were game-breaking bugs in there that were hindering people from actually enjoying the game. And as a result, I find that my opinions on them are drastically different. And so as I'm sort of nearing to getting caught up, and I'm nearing to actually completing my backlog to the point where I'm playing games on release again, um, you know, is this a good idea? Am I going to be now subjected to a lot of games being a lot more buggy and uh, my experience with games starting to change? You know, and I noticed this when I was playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla because, you know, the, the, by the time I played Odyssey, the game had already been out for, I think it's almost, it was almost close to a year by the time I actually got around to playing it. It was, uh, you know, a long time after the game's released. And uh, I played that game in a, in a quality state that I felt was very polished overall. With Valhalla, there was such a numerous amount of just funny bugs, and there was actually, um, I, I witnessed two actual game crashes, and a bug that actually hindered my progress, I had to actually restart from a checkpoint. I like the size of this thing's antlers. Follow the road. What's wait, wait, it broke glitch! It's gl- It's glitched. Hello? I caught the wolf! <laughs> wow. Wow. You know, but some were just like absolutely hilarious that I just, you know, you, you laugh at, you have a really good time. Oh, he did, he took his hand. Oh, fuck. <laughs> no, no, no. And then you know, the game actually crashed on my PS5 to the point where it closed it out completely. Luckily, the game has a really great autosave feature and loading times aren't really an issue anymore because of the fast SSD. So I was able to get right back in there with relative, um, you know, ease and no time. So, you know, as uh, it just got me wondering about, you know, am I going to start seeing this become more of, a, you know, a, a more of a reality where I'm starting to play games now and the fact of the matter is, is that the quality level, because a lot of developers just happen to release their games and push it out there, you know, the quality level has, is going to be dipping. It's going to be in a much less polished state. So I'm going to be playing these games with more glitches, more crashes, and I'm wondering sort of how that's going to affect my uh, playability on this. You know, it's a bit unfortunate, It's and it's also a bit interesting as well. You know, there's this rumor going around that Sony's going to be closing the PS3 store uh, come around summertime, and so, you know, someone like myself who's very much interested in game collecting and stuff... I still have a lot of games in my collection that, you know, I haven't, there's, there's, there might be DLC I want to pay for, you know, and get, there might be stuff I want to download, stuff that is free now because the games are like legacy and no one plays them anymore. So, you know, it, it wouldn't be out of the ordinary for developers to sit there and say, all right, well, everything for the game is completely free to download. 
And, you know, there's been this sort of uh, looming rumor that Sony's going to be closing down the PS3 store. And a bit odd that Sony hasn't come out yet and actually said anything. You know, they've been really hush-hush since the rumors, um, you know, started picking up. And it's been, we've been hearing about this for almost a week so far. And Sony has said absolutely nothing on it. But regardless, you know, I decided to be rather safe than sorry. So what I've been doing is I've actually hooked up my PS3 Slim as well as my original PlayStation 3 80 gigabyte, the one that's sort of my backwards compatible PS2 uh, a machine and, and all that stuff. I've been playing, uh, uh, hooking those system ups, going back into the stores and re-downloading stuff, and I've actually been checking for game updates. And to my surprise, especially early on and such, there's actually a considerable number of games that don't have any updates. You know, they are still running the, the version 1.0, the, the ones that actually shipped on that disc. And before the seventh generation, it was a, a bit interesting, you know, because previously we didn't have online gameplay. It wasn't as popular, I should say. It wasn't as used to patch games and stuff. So, you know, you basically, the game had to be in a functioning state when you got it, or else it was just, you know, critically planned and no one would buy it. So developers were less inclined to take risks. And now because of the current climate where you can basically update a game at whim and where you can ship a game that's basically half complete, and then patch it up later, you know, I mean, let's talk about Cyberpunk 2077. In my eyes, that game is not even out yet, despite it being available to purchase. It's like, it's like the game's right now in, in early access almost. And it's a, it's a really unfortunate, you know, that, that it launched in that state and that game should have been incredible and it should have been amazing, but it just wasn't. You know, and for me personally, like I'm not really interested in playing Cyberpunk until it's ready and uh, I want the next gen patch. I want to be playing it on the PS5 or on the Series X taking full advantage of that hardware. So for me, it's like I'm not even going to be playing the game until that patch comes out and that's not coming until the end of the year. And, uh, you know, it, it just got me thinking, like, should we be playing games on release anymore? Like, how do we know when it's safe enough to play games on release? And I think a lot of that is, is is sort of down to our purchasing decisions. I mean, I know I know for me personally, like I I used to pre-order games, you know, and I would I would sit there and I would sort of look at the release calendar and I would go to GameStop. And you guys know back when I did those unboxing videos where I drove to GameStop, I pre-ordered all of those games ahead of time. I would go to GameStop, I would basically put around, you know, 15 or so games on pre-order, pay the $5 and then go pick them up. And, uh, you know, it was it was fun for a little while. You know, that, that was back when I was just sort of uh, getting out of high school. And I, I was getting into college and I had freedom and stuff and I had a job and I was making money. And well, it was just really exciting to be able to, you know, spend the money that you earned and purchase games and whatnot. It was really cool. And it's a bit interesting because these days I don't pre-order games at all. You know, like I, I can't, I have nothing right now on pre-order. And it's because, you know, I'm so accustomed to playing them much later after release that by the time I actually did get to the games, they were already like super cheap and I would pick them up for like half price because of how fast the price of games drop. So with like the way things have changed and like the route that I'm now going to the point where I'm not gonna be playing games at release, I'm a bit concerned because, you know, obviously when I play a game, you know, you want a quality polished experience, but if you can't rely on the developers to actually provide that for you, or if you can't rely on the publishers to actually care about the gamers and put that first before their budgets and before their quotas, you know, what does that say about the state of the industry, you know, and what's that going to say about the state of our trust, um, our commitments, you know, it's like, you know, like I feel bad for the people over at CDPR, the actual hardworking developers who were working on this game. I know that they knew exactly the state that that game was in when it launched on consoles and when it launched on PC. There's no way they couldn't have, right? They knew the exact state of it. Um, but, you know, again, the publishing companies just pushed them and pushed them and pushed them and just threw it out the door there. And as a result, it's like, you know, now now they, who are, are essentially the hard workers behind a game who had no power in the decision making behind when to release it, are now the ones getting blamed. You know, a lot of people are just sitting there and they're, they're really angry at the studio. The whole the whole reputation of the studio is just in a in a terrible state right now. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see what the future holds for CDPR. 
So I just think it's a really prime example, you know, when you look at stuff like that. I and mean, when you look at other games as well, you know, like Assassin's Creed Valhalla is playable, but it's just kind of unpolished. So they just released a new patch last week before I beat the game, where they were basically saying that there was a game breaking bug in the game that they were aware of that a bit, I guess happened near your settlement. So you can set up like decorations of little items in like areas around your settlement. And apparently that was causing the the game to crash and stuff so they just removed that you know and it's just kind of funny because it's like i was just playing the game you know <laughs> over the course of two months there's been numerous patches and stuff still isn't fixed so i'm not sure like what is the right direction you know it's as i as i sit here and i'm transitioning to now playing games on release again there's a bit of concern for me and it sucks that you know you sort of I feel like that but because of the climate and because of you know CDPR wasn't the first one to release the buggy unfinished game you know and it happens from time to time I just honestly think that it was a really awful PR nightmare for them because of the hype surrounding cyberpunk you know but there are tons of games that released in an equally horrible fashion that no one made a big fuss about because there wasn't hype generating around the release for it you know it wasn't coming from this humongous studio that you know is beloved by by so many people and as a result they have to like sort of re reclaim their uh, reputation I don't know how long it's gonna take for them to do that so it's just something I wanted to discuss um, I'm not really I guess looking for uh, what I should and shouldn't do obviously you know I want to play these games on release but it, it, it's a bit unfortunate that we've now transitioned to this state where you know, games are so unreliable. And as far as I'm aware, games are the only medium where they are sort of unreliable. It's like, imagine you purchasing a Blu-ray movie and you come home, you're like, all right, I'm going to watch the movie. You put the disc in your player and then like the movie actually pauses and skips during the latter half of the entire film. And then the movie company is just like, oh yeah, we'll, we'll patch it later. Like, that would never be acceptable. That would never be considered acceptable behavior in the film industry, yet it's acceptable within the game industry. And the gaming industry does get a little bit of slack because it is such a new medium. You know, we've had games for, you know, 30 plus years at this point now, but it's like, it's still considered next to film. It's still a relatively new medium. It is the most, it is the most progressive form of experiencing entertainment today you know and uh and there's a lot of growing pains that are sort of uh, attached to that and i just feel like this is a lot of them it's like when's the gaming community just gonna get fed up like at what point are they just gonna get fed up and say you know what screw this we we, we just refuse to purchase games like collectively as a community we just refuse to to purchase games until there's some sort of assurance and i wonder if there's going to be some type of committee involved like nintendo has their you know seal of quality attached to their games i wonder if there's going to be one at like a higher level that's going to be overlooking the quality of these games as they're released to ensure that the consumer there's protections for the consumer that when you purchase this product it is guaranteed to work because again in no other medium would this be acceptable yet we accept it all the time with video games so let me know what you guys think about this. For those of you who play video games on release, you know, and it's been, I know a lot of you um, do. I know when it comes to my audience, I'm usually one of the last people to usually, you know, start and play a video game. And, uh, you know, I've enjoyed that for the time, but again, now I'm catching up. So I'm going to be right there with you guys. And this is exciting. You know, I, I don't like being left behind. I like to experience things, uh, you know, as they are brand new. But again, there's always that concern about, oh, is my opinion going to change drastically for a lot of these games because there's no assurance of quality standards attached to these products. Any of these developers could be lying to us, showing us fake footage, be shipping us a broken product, you know, and then requiring these humongous day one patches. It's like, where is the reassurance? Where is the, uh, the quality standard? for what is acceptable and uh, how do we how do we know when to take part in that so it's a bit interesting so I'm excited I'm looking forward to when that time comes because I know I can bring back reviews and things like that it's gonna be great and uh, you know just to play these games as they are and um, yeah we'll see how that goes but wanted to get you guys' thoughts on this so again, let me know if any of you who play video games on release, do you sort of feel like that? Do you feel like you're hesitant to play some of these games? Or do you actually find yourself quitting on some of these games and then coming back to them months later? I don't want to make it seem like it's every single game that's broken. It's not. But, you know, a, a big chunk of them, you know, are in rather just average states of polish 
in comparison to uh, what we used to get. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and hope you have a good one.